Hi, everybody. I'm Donna Prosser, Chief Clinical Officer with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. We're here to talk today about mobility management, and I'm excited to be joined by Deborah Maluski. She's an adjunct professor of physical therapy at Chapman University, and she is also a practicing physical therapist. Welcome, Debbie. Well, hello, Donna. It's nice to meet you. Thanks so much for joining. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your background. Certainly. Um, I've been practicing as a physical therapist for 29 years. Um, the majority of my uh, patient care experiences have been in acute care hospitals in acute rehab settings, also in skilled nursing rehab settings. Um, I do uh, lecture at Chapman University at this time, and I am currently practicing at a trauma hospital. So I have plenty of experience with patient care. Excellent. All right, well then let's just get right to the questions then. Um, I wonder if you could start by telling us, you know, why is it that mobility is so important and, and what is the relationship to other quality and safety outcomes? Well, um, mobility obviously is critical to our well-being. Um, there have been many, many studies have shown that bed rest negatively impacts all of our body systems. Um, that's not uh, new knowledge. Um, mobility sometimes is misinterpreted as um, more like a, phys a PE class or some sort of phys vigorous physical activity. Um, when in, in actuality, it really includes everything from range of motion and positioning to changing the position of the bed, uh, performing bed mobility, any out of bed activity, and of course, ambulation. That's our main goal to maintain our independence. Um, so many functional outcomes have been tied to um, a lack of mobility and increased mortality. So, you know, we really need to promote our abilities to maintain our functional independence. And so I know I've been a nurse for 30 years. This wasn't something that we really talked about 25, 30 years ago. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what's, what, what happened in the past with mobility management that led us to being, to understanding why this is such a problem? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I think still it's one of those topics that maybe isn't emphasized enough. Um, we all have an understanding that it's so important, but, you know, really inactivity directly contributes to frailty, a loss of functional independence, and falling, which, you know, are all things that we really want to prevent in our patients. Um, we, we really need those mobility programs. Um, they've been found to decrease length of stay, 30-day um, hospital readmissions, the overall cost of patient care, and ultimately the need for institutionalization for patients. So, um, you know, typically in hospitals, we have a fragmented approach and patients are discouraged from getting out of bed because there's a culture of, of risk uh, avoidance. Obviously, we want to maintain patient safety as much as possible. That's natural and that's understandable. But uh, I think we go to the extreme in trying to prevent our patients from being able to move themselves. And in the meantime, they um, become so deconditioned that they can't manage themselves at the end of their hospitalization. And I think to, you know, today, uh, this is much more of a topic of conversation than it was in the past. And, and I feel like, we, you know, those of us, the clinicians that are at the bedside have learned from phys our physical therapists that, that we need to get our patients moving. But what are you seeing in hospitals now? What, what kind of barriers are you seeing um, today in the acute care setting? Um, well, you know, some of the same barriers we've always seen in the past. There is a culture of <clears throat> fragmentation. You know, everybody's got a job to do and, you know, we'll allow the therapists to perform the mobility. And unfortunately, not every patient gets physical therapy. Um, you know, we have a short time period in an entire 24 hour period that is spent with the patient. Um, occasionally, we'll have somebody who's really extremely proactive and helping that patient to perform movement, but you know, it's really inconsistent. There might be one shift where somebody is extremely proactive and another shift or three following that where, you know, the patient is absolutely allowed to just remain in bed. Um, and in that day or day and a half, they lose all of the gains that they had made from the previous 
opportunity to be um, moving. So, uh, you know, it, it's, there's still not much consistency in how patients are allowed to perform their mobility. Um, we try to maximize, you know, what a person is able to do um, within their time with us. And I think, you know, it's something that we really need to get everybody on board with. Any idea what system or process issues may be leading to these different individual behaviors? Uh, well, there's quite a few, actually. <laughs> um, you know, firstly, you know, there is such fragmentation in job duties. And, you know, everybody, you know, there really are um, time and staffing constraints. Um, there's, there's fear of being injured in mobilizing a patient. Um, there are mo pieces of mobility equipment that are on the patient care units or at least available. And I think um, people feel uh, insecure using the equipment. They maybe aren't confident in you know, managing how to move the patient. There really doesn't feel like there's as much training or guidance, maybe mentoring as a person would would like to have, you know, it's, it's always a delightful experience to have a staff member stay in the room during physical therapy and learn how to use the equipment or, you know, learn all the magic that we do with the patient to help them to uh, perform at their best potential. Um, you know, it, there, a lot of times the order sets themselves don't include any uh, comment on mobility. There is no order that says, you know, patient must be out of bed. And a lot of times the, um, even if there is an activity order, it's somewhat neglected because it isn't a medication. It isn't documented on a scheduled uh, routine like a medication would be. And I think our, our EMRs really are, are greatly at fault because it's so difficult to actually capture a patient's true abilities. Uh, with the EMR documentation that we have available to us. So there, there are quite a few little hurdles, I think, that prevent um, the, the full potential for our patients. And it's not that people don't want the best for the patients. I just think it, it just gets kind of as an oversight in their day. Yes, I can. I, I have seen that myself, and I'm sure that everybody that's watching this video has seen this. Um, and so I'm curious, though, um, how how do you think we can address the mixed messages that we're sending to patients? You know, you have the physical therapist that comes in and says it's really important you for you have to get out of bed three times a day, at least sit in the chair. You need to move, and then the nurse comes in and puts the side rails up and says, "Stay in the bed because you might fall if you get out of the bed." So how do we address those mixed messages that we're sending to patients? Oh, definitely, definitely. I've observed that myself so many times. Um, you know, it, those, those differing messages come not just from, between nurse and rehab as well. Um, you, the families maybe have their own perceptions about what is an appropriate way to treat somebody who's gone through an illness or is going through an illness. Um, Physicians may say one thing without even communicating with the rest of the staff. So all the, the communication that goes on in the room doesn't really seem to carry outside the room. So they do definitely get mixed messages. Um, having a multidisciplinary team that meets together, um, they have a system where they align their goals, they set goals for the day, they communicate how they're gonna approach those goals, um, having communication boards in the room uh, where those goals are, you know, listed for the patient, you know, it's really helpful if a physician goes in the room and says, I want you to walk six times a day and actually writes it on that communication board. Um, good chance that somebody is going to follow through on that if that's been written down. Um, so, you know, really, I, I think there needs to be better communication among the disciplines and also directly in front of the family, you know, so they understand and the patient so that they understand that this message is consistently being carried through the team. Um, you know, we can educate as well, you know, as, as patients come into the hospital, you know, it, it really needs to be part of the basic education. 
the bed will make you sick. You need to be out of bed. You need to start moving. Um, I, I use the phrase, your bed is not your friend. Um, that's where you sleep and that's all. Um, people don't like to hear that so much sometimes, but you know, we, mobility really is a medicine and it needs to be treated that way. Um, and I think patients and families need to get that message as well. I love the way you said that, that the bed will make you sick, the bed is not your friend. That's great. So when a patient is in the hospital and they have physical therapy inpatient, how do we make sure that we set up their post-discharge recovery appropriately so that they have realistic mobility goals? Especially if they don't have anybody at any kind of uh, home health or any other uh, uh, services at home. Oh, that's a great question. Yes, there, there is a gap in that um, follow up upon leaving the hospital. Um, I think it really does start in the hospital, though, getting that consistent message that this mobility is important for you and teaching them <clears throat> their greatest level of mobility so that they understand what they're capable of. Um, it is particularly difficult for patients who did not get any physical therapy in the hospital. Um, and it, uh, particularly if they don't get any home health. Um, I, my observations on home health, I have done some home health myself. You know, it's real inconsistent what the practitioners are sharing um, as a message um, once the patient has gotten home as well. We all know that once a person gets in their own environment, they kind of take a different role in their uh, management of themselves. But we really do need to teach them self-management strategies. Um, I think we need to give them daily mobility goals, not only while they're in the hospital, but to teach that those daily mobility goals need to carry on outside of the hospital as well. Uh, reinforce that education on how important it is and what, what part the mobility takes in their recovery um, to help them to um, maybe minimize the impact of the time that they're going to be spend recovering. Um, that also, you know, discharge instructions. I'm finding that the, the instructions are vague. You know, they'll say something along the lines of daily activity recommendations are 150 minutes of activity a week. That seems a little intimidating if you've just left the hospital. Um, it really needs to be more specific. Um, that you know you really need to personalize it to a person's abilities um, that's obviously something that we do in physical therapy i will say however upon discharge the patient's done with physical therapy and they don't feel like they need to continue with that that really needs to be specific in the discharge recommendations great so for our hospital administrators and other clinicians who, at the bedside who are trying to create improvement in this space, is there any recommendations that you have? You know, if you, if you could just tell, you know, one or two things to a hospital administrator to improve the mobility of their patients, what would it be? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. You know, I really think mobility needs to be seen as a standard of care. Um, I, I think that everything should start from there. We need to see mobility as an intervention, treat it as effective as a medication. Um, I really think in order sets, there needs to be an automatic order. So many order sets actually have an automatic order for bed rest rather than mobility recommendations. Um, established protocols have been proven to be extremely helpful. That's how you get those improved outcomes of the shorter length of stay, the reduced cost of care, um, the improved outcomes upon discharge, and the reduced hospital readmissions. So those are the, I think, the essential things we need to really start getting uh, ingrained in our culture. Well, thank you, Debbie, so much for being here with us today. We uh, really appreciate your time and your expertise on this. And, um, and I hope that over the next uh, several years, we will be able to get everybody to understand that, that mobility is just as important as medication. I like how you said that as well. That's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you. Great. All right. Well, have a wonderful day.